Hello guys and welcome to lesson 12 basic trigonometric identities part 2. In this video, we're going to discuss sum and difference identities. Okay, so to start, we need to have some few concepts first. So first, uh, to prove that these identities are true, so we need to prove first if these identities sine A minus B and cos A minus B, uh, what will be the identities of these two? What will be equal to? Okay, so we'll try to look for the answer of this and we can actually know or try to find the equivalent value of this using the concept of the unit circle okay so what do we know about the unit circle so for example if we have a unit circle okay so we know that the radius is always one because it's called a unit circle meaning having a radius of one we also know from our previous uh, lesson that x is always, uh, in the unit circle, it's always cosine of the given angle. In this scenario, we have a and b, okay? And we have y be the sine of the given angle. Okay, so let's try to illustrate. So, uh, let's change color first. So, if we have a... Uh, unit circle okay uh, let's say we have a given angle let's start with B so this green here is our angle B of course we have a circle I'll draw the circle okay so if we have a circle yeah that's it it's a circle okay and this is a unit circle okay remember that this is a unit circle so we can say that the radius is always 1, hence this is 1, this is 1, and this will give us a coordinate, let's name this one as P, okay, coordinate of 1, 0, because that's, that's the unit, uh, it's, it's a unit circle, it's 1, okay. And of course, we don't know the value of here, however, we have the angle, beta, so we know, let's say this is, P, this, this is point Q, so we have x, y for the coordinate and uh, looking at our concepts here, we know that x is cosine of the given angle. So we have cosine of beta or b, sorry, and y will be the sine of b, okay? So that will be the first angle. However, if we try to add another angle here, so let's say we have an angle here, okay? So this angle here is from the, the initial side to the terminal side and of course this is 1 terminal side distance of the terminal side from the center is 1 so let's name this one as A okay angle A so this will give us so Q PQ then let's have this as our R so R is cosine A sine A okay now uh, looking at the intersection between these two, the angle between A and B, uh, we will notice that, uh, let's change another color. We will notice that we can actually have an angle here. Okay, and this angle here is actually A minus B. Okay, so to find the intersection between A and B, we subtract the angle, so we have A minus B. Okay, and there is a distance between Q and R. So let's name this one as D1. Okay, now take note that we can translate or move this triangle here in such a way that will touch our standard position, our uh, uh, initial side. So it's at 0, 0. So I'll try to draw another unit circle here. So, this is the unit circle. Another unit circle. I'll, I'll be transferring the violet triangle in such a way that it will touch the initial 
position okay i'll try to draw so this will be our violet triangle so let's say it's about something about like this okay so we know that this is already a minus b so i just translated or move okay i'll uh, i'll move in the triangle so this will be the triangle now okay so we know this is still p which is one zero so our so we have now a new position so let's call this one as s and this s contains cosine of a minus b sine of a minus b okay so using our concepts same concepts here so y is sine a minus b okay so what can we say about the distance from s and p okay distance here so let's name this one as d2 okay so we know that uh the triangle here the second circle is the second circle this is the first circle the triangle at the second circle is just the same as the triangle the first circle the violet triangle so we can actually say that the distances from r and q and the distances from s and p the distance from s and p are equal okay they are equal so d1 is just d2 d1 equals d2 okay and we know from our topics previous topics uh, that the distance formula so if you can remember the distance formula which is the square root of x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2 squared this is to calculate the distances between two points okay so we will use this concept here to find the distance so what would be our distances so for d1 we have our points here so we'll have the square root of okay so we have x sub 1 so let's say that our r will be the first point so this is x sub 1 y sub 1, y sub 1 you would be x sub 2 y sub 2 okay so we'll have x sub 1 is cosine of a minus x sub 2 is cosine of b squared okay and that's the next step then plus y sub 1 y sub 1 is sine a minus sine of b quantity square okay uh, so that will be our d sub 1 how about d sub 2 so d sub 2 we will use the second uh, unit circle so from s to p so let's have our s be our first point so this would be x sub 1 cos a minus b so x sub 1 y sine a minus b is y sub 1 then our 1 will be x sub 2 0 would be y sub 2 okay so square root of x sub 1 is cos quantity a minus b uh, minus 1 squared because this is 1 here so sine a minus b minus 1 uh, plus sine a minus b minus 0 quantity squared okay so that is our uh, distances using the distance formula okay so let's try to simplify both sides so obviously we can cancel out the square root because you can square both sides so there will be no more square root and expand expand the terms so we're going to expand the terms Okay, so first, let's have cos A minus cos B, quantity squared. So we'll use square of the binomial. Okay. So, square of the binomial, we will have cos squared A minus 2 cos A cos B plus cos squared B. Okay, using square of the binomial. Okay, then... Sorry. Then we'll have a plus. So let's have the next one. So we have sine squared a minus two sine a 
sin b plus sin squared b. So, using again, square of a binomial. Okay, then equals. So, for the next part, we're going to expand also. So, we'll have cos squared a minus b. Okay, minus 2 cos a minus b plus 1. Okay, and obviously, the last part here, I'll just change the color. Uh, that's a b. So, plus, so what remains is just sine uh, a minus b squared. Okay, because sine a minus b is just 0. The sine a minus b minus 0 is just sine a minus b squared. Right, because of this squared here. Okay, so after this, we'll rearrange. Okay, so in rearranging, let's try to review your prior knowledge for first from the first identities. We know that, I just write it here, we know that sine theta squared plus cos squared theta is 1. Okay, so here, we know that from our Pythagorean identity. So, checking our given, we can check pairs of sine and cosine. So, first we have sine squared a plus cos squared a. So, we can actually take this one out and write 1. Same goes with sine squared b and cos squared b. So, this will give us another 1. So, cancel out. Okay, what that means is negative 2 cos a cos b minus 2 sin a sin b. But we can com combine them and filter out negative 2. And this will give us negative 2 cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. And of course, we can combine. Combining 1 plus 1, uh, this will give us 2. Okay, so let's continue here. So, on the other side, we have cos squared a minus b and sine squared a minus b. So, again, Pythagorean identities, they have the same angles. Okay, so this becomes 1. So, we'll have 1 here. Minus 2 cos uh, a minus b. Uh, yeah, and of, of course, we have another one here, so plus one here. Then we we'll know that we can combine, so one plus one is just two, so we will have two here. And of course, uh, if we try to simplify this, two, okay, we can cancel out two because uh, using our uh, our properties of equality so this becomes zero so we can divide this one by two both sides so divided by actually it's a two but negative two divided by negative two negative two so cancel out negative two and this will give us our final answer uh, I'll just put the final answer here at uh, least this one so what will be the final answer? So the final answer is cos. Sorry. So cos A cos B plus sine A sine A sine B equals cos of Okay, I'll just erase this one. I'll write, 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 write everything. Okay, so we will have uh, cos A cos B plus sine A sine B equals cos of A minus B. And this will be our first 
identity. Okay, so we know now what is cos A minus cos B. Okay, so we have now our first identity. So we have cos A minus B is just this here. Okay, cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Okay, next, uh, how about if we try to have a negative beta? Okay, so let's say now uh, we have cos of A minus negative B. Okay, so what will be our identity here? So we simply use the formula cos A cos B plus sine A sine B, but instead of having positive B, we'll be having negative B. Okay, so we'll have cos A cos of negative B plus sine A, uh, then we have sine of negative B. Okay, so let's try to review your identities. So in our previous lesson, we know that cos A, a cos of a negative angle is just the cos of the positive angle. Okay, so we know that cos of negative theta is just cos of theta from the even even odd functions or even odd identities. And we have the sine of negative theta becomes the negative of the sine of theta. Okay, so which is part here. Okay, using these concepts here, so we can say that cos A and our cos negative B is just cos B plus sine A. However, sine negative B becomes negative sine of positive B. So in if you try to simplify, we will have cos A uh, cos B then our negative sign um, uh, is transferred here. So we'll have sign A, sign B. And this will be our second, uh, of course, second identity. Negative minus B is just A plus B. So we have now our second identity. Okay, so we're now done with cosine. But how about sine? Okay, how, what is sine A plus B and sine A minus B? So, first we need to review. So, we must remember that there is a uh, close relationship between cosine and sine functions. And in fact, the two are just functions which are shifted. Okay, shifted from one another. So, for example, if we have a sine, so the red one is sine. Let's have this function here, sine. Okay, so this is sine theta. And we, if we have a cosine theta, so let's say this is cosine theta. The blue one is cosine theta. Okay, so this is cosine theta. So we must remember that if we try to shift cosine, okay, if we try to move cosine, in such a way that it becomes uh, shift it to the left so it's in such a way that it becomes uh, this one here so we shifted it by pi over 2 we move it by pi over 2 and this becomes pi over 2 minus theta okay so this gives us the idea that uh, sorry uh, cos pi over 2 minus a given angle is just sine of that given angle. Okay, so let's say that we have a cosine and our theta be a minus b. Okay, so we have cosine of pi over 2 minus a minus b. Okay, so uh, this will give us cosine of pi over 2 minus a plus b. Okay, and of course this is, if we try to use our uh, formula, 
this will give us so let's let's say that we group pi over 2 and minus 8 so we'll have cos of pi over 2 minus a and this becomes uh, uh, cos b and since this is plus okay this is plus so we will have minus sine of pi over 2 minus a uh, sine b okay so let's try to erase this okay here uh, remember that cos pi over 2 minus a uh, using this concept here so we will have sine of a cos b but how about sine pi over 2 minus a okay so how about this so if we try to remember also uh, this will give us so it's again shifted if sine pi over 2 minus a is shifted so this will also give us sine pi over uh, minus sorry over 2 minus a given angle will be cosine of theta okay so it's still shifted so you will have cos of a sine b okay and remember this is actually okay so this is actually sine of a minus b okay hence we have our uh, third uh, third identity so we have sine a minus b is just sine a cos b minus cos a sine b and of course if you try to apply this same pr same process so instead of minus we have plus so this becomes a uh, sine of a plus b equals sine of a cos b plus cos a sine b Okay, so this will be our fourth fourth identity. Okay, so we're done with sine and cosine. Now we have also tangent. So in tangent, we can actually apply our concepts, our previous concepts in sine and cosine. So for example, if we have tangent of a plus b, we know that this is uh, tangent is sine a plus b over cos a plus b okay and uh, simplifying this further so we can apply apply 3 and apply 2 so we'll have sine a cos b uh, plus cos a sine b all over uh, cos, cos A cos B minus sine A sine B okay so we want to have tangent so we're going to multiply factor here okay so to cancel out Okay, so what will be the factor so our goal is to have tangent okay so to simplify we need to rationalize so what is rationalization we're going to multiply a factor we rationalize so take note we have signs so we have sign here so remember in our uh, quotient quotient identities we know that tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta so if we have already sine in our given, we will multiply cosine. So this will give us an idea that we need to multiply. Sorry, this is cosine A, cosine B. So of course, if we multiply cosine A, 1 over cosine A, cosine B in the numerator, we are going also to multiply 1 over cosine A and cosine B in the denominator because we're multiplying a value of 1. Okay, so this will give us... Uh, sine of a if we try to distribute okay distributing in each term ok 
Okay? So, we will have sine A cos B all over cos A uh, cos B plus, so we have the next term plus here, uh, cos A sine B all over uh, cos A okay, cos A cos B all over uh, cos A cos B all over cos A cos B minus sine A sine B uh, all over cos A cos B okay so observing now our result we can observe that we can cancel some things so cancel cos B for first term the numerator cancel cos A then we will have cos A also in the denominator. And here, we cannot cancel anything at all. Okay, but uh, we know that we can separate this. Okay, we know that we can separate this. We have sine A cos A. So, uh, what will be the result? So, the result is we have sine A cos A. Take note, sine A cos A. They have the same angle. So, we will have tangent A. And then plus, then we have sine B over cos B, which is tangent B as per our quotient identity. All over cos B and cos A, uh, cos A over cos A, cos B also cancelled also. So do we have 1? This is equivalent to 1. Okay. Minus, so take note that we can separate this. So we will have sine A cos A which is tangent of A, sine B over cos B, which is tangent of B. Hence, we have our uh, fifth identity. So, we know that tangent A plus B is just tan A tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Okay, so these are the complete list of the identities. So, by the way, for tangent, if we change the sign, so, using even odd identities, of course, uh, tangent uh, B. So, if an angle is negative B here, so it becomes negative also. So, they uh, just change the signs, okay, for A minus B, tangent A minus B. Okay, so there is actually a shortcut to remember this, okay. Uh, we can have uh, for sign, and we have a shortcut for cosine also and we have a shortcut for uh, not really a shortcut but uh, something to help us remember tangent so for sine uh, we can have a an acronym or uh, what do we call this a rhyme <laughs> okay so we have sin cos cosin okay if it's sine it's sin cos cosin in cos cosine. Okay, just remember that the signs are the same. Okay, for cosine, it's cos cosine sin. Okay, so for cosine, it's cos cos sin sin. Okay, so uh, for example, cosine of theta plus beta, it's just cosine, cosine, then sine, sine. Just remember that for cosine, the signs are reverse. The okay, signs are reverse. So if it's plus, it becomes minus. If it's uh, minus, it becomes plus. Now for tangent, uh, we can actually have tan tan. Okay, tan tan. Then in at the bottom we have one tan tan. So only tangent has a numerator and a denominator. Okay, so if it's plus. Uh, it, the sign above is plus and the sign below is minus. If it's minus, the given is minus, the sign is minus above, then at the bottom is it's plus. Okay, so we have sin, cos, cosin, cos, cosin, sin, and tan, tan, one, tan, tan. Okay, so in the next video, uh, we'll be having the examples. So, see you there.